now that they were tracking, the group moved more carefully. Bindi was certain everyone could hear her heart beating. She tried to calm herself by thinking about Terry and Robert playing with the traps. Those little ones relied on her and the tiger protection unit risking their own safety in order to keep the tigers from harm. Up ahead, the men came to an abrupt stop. They dropped to their knees and motioned for the others to do the same. Cameron and Bindi ducked to the ground. Bindi could hear the muffled sounds of voices not far away. It must be the poachers. Bindi and Cameron watched the waited and waited. The men in the protection unit communicated using sign language. One by one, they moved away silently disappearing into the bushes. What's going to happen to the poachers, whispered Bindi. If we catch them, they'll be arrested and charged and charged. Since question is, what's happened to our poor tiger? As Cameron spoke, the patrol descended on three poachers in a clearing that was just visible to Bindi. She could see that there was a scuffle and then watch as Three poachers tore away and ran off into the thick scrub. The members of the Tiger Protection Patrol followed in hot pursuit. Cameron and Bindi were alone. After a pause, they, were, they both cautiously stood up and looked around. Cameron led the way to the clearing. We need to find that. They both rose. Bindi heard it before she saw it. A low growl which would be hard to mistake for anything else. She turns around very slowly. Facing her through a tangle of vines stood a very angry looking tiger. Holy guacamole, Mindy yelled. Whatever you do, don't move. Cameron slowly made his way towards Mindy and placed himself between her and the tiger. What do we do now, whispered Bindi. Hang on, Cameron knew something wasn't right. He couldn't figure out why the tiger hadn't jumped at them or turned tail and ran away. Then it hit him. He's in a cage. Bindi gasped as Cameron moved towards the tiger. Sure enough, once he swept away the foliage, a steel cage was revealed. The tiger was trapped. That was slow, squeaked Bindi. Cameron nodded. He was hugely relieved to find the tiger, the missing tiger in one piece. What would they have done with the tiger if they had got away with him? Bindi knew she wouldn't like the answer, but she had to ask. Most likely, he'd be killed and some of his bones and organs would be used to make Eastern medicine. They both shuddered at the thought, staring in wonder at the majestic tiger, who continued to shake his tail and show his displeasure at being caged by giving another low growl. Bindi and Cameron could hear the rest of the unit making their way back to the foliage. They were drenched in sweat and out of breath, but they were also empty-handed. There were no poachers with them. What happened? asked Bindi. Sonia shook his head in frustration. They were too fast for us and had a truck waiting for them. We tried to shoot out one of the bad tires but only managed to put a few holes in the truck store. Cameron shook his head. What a shame. But the good news is, take a look at what they left behind. Bindi pointed to the tiger. The patrol crowded around the cage. Sonia nodded to Cameron. We need to assess how long he's been caged and if he's injured, hungry or thirsty. Sonia and Cameron inspected the tiger through the wire. It wasn't easy. This was no tame trap. Luckily, the tiger didn't appear to be injured, aside from having lost a few patches of fur on the snare. If 
an animal doesn't struggle, it can be caught relatively unharmed, like this one was. Kromansunya is when an animal is left caught in a snare for days and it struggles to free itself, that the damage is done. Sunya put out a collapsible water bowl from his pack and gave the tiger a drink. He turned to Bindi. This is a good day. It's not often we get to release a live and uninjured tiger back into the wild. Bindi agreed, surely a good day's work didn't get better than this.